pray for the children as they go for Sunday school. Father, we're grateful. We're asking your hand upon the children as they study of your word and prepare for their Christmas play. We're praying, God, your hand to rest upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Just turn the monitors off for me. Job chapter 42, beginning to read from verse 1 to 17, I had gone to do a revival in April of 2019 to Livingston, uh, Pastor Simon Zima's church. In that revival, God really helped us and must have been the third or second night uh, area churches came and uh, the pastor from uh, Dambwa brought some people. There was a lady in that service that came up for prayer and she, and so I'm asking, say, what's the need? She whispers into my ear, she says, Pastor Simon, uh, my husband and I were believing God for a child and so uh, many years, uh, many years had gone and they were believing God for the fruit of the womb and so we prayed, I called for the husband to come to the front, I prayed for them, believed God. Uh, so the revival ended. I told them to go do what uh, husband and wife do, especially if you are believing God for a child. <laughs> and so I, I came back, uh, but then I was still in Matero, and uh, in uh, September came here, and so I was part of the team that went for the Southern Campaign with Pastor George uh, late September or early October. So I picked it up from, I think, Livingston. I did Livingston three nights. First night was in the main church. The second night, one of the baby churches. The third night and last night was in the uh, Dambwa church crusade. And so before we began, so a lady walking to me, and, and, and she, she's approaching me. She says, Pastor Simon, do you remember me? I'm like... <laughs> No, <laughs> I am not responsible. <laughs> I love my wife. I am not responsible. And she says, do you remember me? I said, no, I don't remember you. She says, five months ago, you came to Livingstone Main Church, prayed for me. I was believing God for a child, and you laid your hands on us. You prayed for us. And I don't need to do any further explanation eh, of uh, uh, she was pregnant. And so I, 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 I really believed God. I prayed for them. And they called me when uh, she finally delivered a baby boy. And so she called me. She uh, was able to thank me. I said that to say this tonight. We serve a God of a turnaround. I'm pausing for effect. No matter the story, no matter the duration, no matter the condition, the God we serve tonight is a God of a turnaround. In a blink of an eye, in an ordinary service like this one, the God I serve can single you out and he can begin a turnaround. And I want to consider a simple thought I've entitled the God of a turnaround. Job, no doubt, is a well-known character of the Bible. And tonight, my text is taken from the very last chapter of the book of Job. Because in this passage of Scripture, the God of heaven rewrote history for Job. You know your Bible, chapter 1, he suffered calamity, and all that happened, but in chapter 42, the Bible gives us a different story. Let's read our text. Job 42 verse 1 to 17. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything, and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You asked, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, let me speak. You said I will question you, and you shall answer me. 
I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. But now my eyes sees you. Therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And so it was after the Lord had spoken these words to Job that the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, my wrath is aroused against you and your two friends for you have not forsaken, uh, for, for you have not spoken of me uh, 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 I'm, I'm, take, I'm getting ahead of myself here. For you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. And offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Bildad, the Sh uh, uh, Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namathite, went and did as the Lord had commanded them, for the Lord uh, 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 had accepted Job. And the Lord restored Job's losses. Can somebody say amen? The Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before than all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those who had been his acquaintances before came to him and ate food. Let's continue. Verse 12 of our text. Uh, just uh, bear with me tonight. I did not copy the whole of... Uh, my text, man, uh, verse 42, uh, chapter 42, sorry, and verse 12. Verse 12, the Bible says, uh, let's begin from verse 11. Then all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those who had been his acquaintances before came to him and ate food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys he also had seven sons and three daughters and he called the name of the first Jemima the name of the second Keziah and the name of the third Karen oh in all the land were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job and their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers after this Job lived 140 years and saw his children and grandchildren for four generations so Job died old and full Full of days. May God bless the reading of his word tonight. Again, a message I've entitled, The God of a Turnaround. Let's consider number one, the trials of life. The trials of life. Like I've mentioned, many of us are familiar with the story of Job. This is the man who had undergone calamity beyond anyone here tonight. And I don't mean to undermine or to make light of whatever difficulties you may be going through. But your story tonight cannot compare with that of Job. But we have to realize here tonight that up until the point of chapter 1 of Job's book, Job was the big man of the city. Job was the big burner of the city. Job was the respected man in the land. His life was an enviable a life by many around him. Listen to the story or to the uh, 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 amount of riches that this man had. The Bible says he was rich in 7,000 sheep, 300 camels, 500 uh, teams of oxen, 500 donkeys. He owned land and had many servants. This actually laid to God to even publicly begin to boast of him in chapter 1 and verse 1 of Job. The Bible says he feared 
feared and shunned evil. What a testimony that God would speak of a man or a woman tonight that you are a fearful man that fears and you shun evil. Job chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. Verse 8, then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Verse 11, but now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. Verse 12, and the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. And so we see here that God is boasting of Job. God is, is celebrating the life of Job. God is, is tossing Job to be the trophy that he has, so to speak. And he boasts to the devil, he says, have you considered, have you seen my servant? He's a righteous man. He's an upright individual. He shuns evil. He fears me. He honors me in all that he does. But the problem tonight is many times we are not privy to the boasting of God of our lives. We are not privy. I wonder tonight what God is speaking about my life to the devil. <laughs> I wonder. And as I was putting this together, I looked back, I said, could it be that that setback I faced, could it be that maybe God was boasting of me to the devil? <laughs> I mean, I, I just couldn't help but begin to look back. I say, listen, that reversal I had, that de tough decision I had to make, and I stayed true to God, I stayed committed to my calling, could it be that God one day was boasting to the devil, have you seen my son Simon? That he's true, that I've called him. And the devil said, ah, the reason why he's saving you is because you've given him a good job. <laughs> You're promoting him. He's the envy of his friends at the workplace. You're moving him. Your money is coming his way. And maybe God said, okay, 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 take away his job and you, we see whether or not he will still stand. And thank God for four years, I am still standing. Could it be tonight? I don't know about your story tonight. The challenge is, we are not privy to the boasting of God about our lives. If, he, if after he has finished talking to the devil and he comes to me and says, Simon, Simon, listen, listen, my boy. I'm just from having a meeting with the devil. Don't disappoint me. Don't disappoint me. Huh? Don't disappoint me. This is what I've said to the devil. Oh, okay, okay, God, no problem. No problem. When is he coming? No, it will come on such and such a day. This is what, no problem. But the challenge is we are not privy to the boasting of God about our lives. And so when things are happening and when things are unfolding, we look left, we look right, and we begin to point fingers, we begin to accuse people, we begin to rebuke and bind, we begin to, we begin to be embittered, we begin to frustrate things, we begin to frustrate people, we begin to injure the very people that may even be of help to us. Suddenly, there was a radical change in the fortunes of Job. A radical change. In a moment, the Bible would tell us he lost everything. Truly, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The first attack was an attack on his possessions. And everybody that was connected to him, his children, his daughters, his sons, they were all attacked. Verse 13 of Job chapter 1. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting at the oldest brother's house, a messenger arrived at Job's home with, his, with this news. Your oxen were plowing. 
with the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabaeans raided us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farmhands. Uh, 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 I am the only one who has escaped to tell you this. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrives with this news. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. I am the only one who has escaped to tell you this. While he was still speaking, a third messenger arrives with this news. Three bands of Chaldean raiders have stolen your car. They have killed your servants. I am the only one who has this. While he was still speaking, I mean, can you talk about a bad day? Another messenger arrived. With this, with this news, your sons and your daughters were feasting in their oldest brother's house. Suddenly, a powerful wind swept in from the, uh, uh, from the wilderness and it hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed on them, and your children are dead. I am the only one who has escaped to come and tell you this. Job's response. The Bible says he arose, he tore his robe. In the Old Testament culture, this was one way of expressing sorrow, just like in our times. Uh, in times of sorrow, people would wear black to show that they are mourning. And so here is Job, he rips his, uh, he rips his robe, he is, uh, he is in sorrow. Uh, the second thing he did is he shaved his head. This was also part of showing sorrow. A beard in the Old Testament symbolized maturity and dignity. And so by shaving his beard, it, it signified a humility and a great loss. And number three, he fell to the ground and worked. Worshipped him. Who does that? After having suffered loss, the Bible says he falls to the ground and he begins to lift up his eyes towards heaven. He begins to worship God. I mean, some of us, every, every tweet, every WhatsApp message, everything that we type and we write is about our sorrow in those times. But the Bible says, Job, he falls to the ground. He begins to worship God. He begins to lift up his voice towards heaven. He begins to adore God. He begins to exalt the name of our Lord in total surrender to God's sovereign will concerning his life and concerning his situation. Job chapter 1 verse 22, powerful words are contained here. It says, in all of this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. How many believers are caught in that uh, uh, web tonight uh, that when calamity befalls them, uh, that when misfortune happens to them, uh, they point the finger to God. They point the finger to Almighty God. They begin to blame God. You saved me. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Christian uh, and how is it that this has befallen me? Uh, we complain towards God. But the Bible here tells us that in all of this, Job never charged it against God. Righteous man. Let's look secondly at the attack on his health. The attack on Job's health. This involved the enemy attacking his health. So listen to me tonight. The enemy will not only attack your wealth, he will also attack your health. It's part and parcel. Just because we are Christians doesn't exempt us from the assaults of the enemy. Just because we are born again doesn't shield us from the attacks of the enemy. Job 2 verse 1 to 7. One day the members of the heavenly court came again to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser Satan came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. 
Satan answered, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. And he has maintained his integrity even though you urged me to harm him without cause. Satan replied to him, skin for skin. A man will give up everything he has to save his life. But reach out and take away his health. He will show he curse you to your face. All right, do with you as you please, the Lord said to Satan, but spare his life. So Satan left the Lord's presence and he struck Job with terrible boils from head to toe. Uh, 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 scripture is very descriptive uh, that Job would sit and he would begin to scrub his boils in, day, in broad daylight. He's in anguish. His health failed him. Now he's unable even to function. He's unable even to make Make money, he's restricted, and the Bible says his health was afflicted by the devil. Again, we are not privy many times to the boastings of God about our lives. But notice, verse 10, the Bible says, In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Wonder tonight. How many would keep their integrity even when the enemy has hit them where it hurts the most? And so we see here one of the great challenges of life of a believer is to reconcile the realities of life to your faith. What you believe, what you confess, what you, be, what, what, what you give to and beginning now to reconcile that life with the reality of what you are living. That becomes a big challenge to many believers. To make sense or understand between what we are going through and what God has revealed in his word. He says this, but I'm experiencing complete opposite. It's a big challenge. To understand our revelation of God, His nature and His will. He's a loving God. He's a healer. He's a provider. Uh, and so to reconcile that to what we are going through becomes a big challenge. Our understanding and expectations from God compared to the life we are actually having to live. Many times there's a difference between the life we desire and the life we're experiencing. Proverbs 2, 12, verse 25 says, Worry weighs a person down. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 6. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, troubles weigh people down. They are weight. We are like Job many times. We make an assessment. In between, Job made some wrong decisions. He began to pray. He says, Cursed be the day that I was born, chapter 3. Cursed be the day that I was conceived. Cursed be the day that my mother, cursed be the breast that I fed on. And so he did all that. And many times we can come to those wrong conclusions. Because of the burdens we carry in one. Sometimes unknown to anybody else. But we carry them inside. And we manifest them through resentment. Through rebellion. Of attitude. Moods. You begin to inflict those that are near to you. And we begin to affect them. Psalms 148 verse 8. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. Here is the psalmist David. He says, part of God's work is to lift those that are weighed down by the troubles of life, by the misfortunes of life. When they are weighed down, God's job is, be is to begin to lift us up uh, before him. 
our focus many times changes. We begin to focus on the event. We begin to focus on ourselves. We stop ministering. We stop reaching out. Let me close then and look at the promises of God. Our Lord Jesus, throughout the Gospels and throughout the Bible, He does not promise the perfect life. But what He does promise is we can have a blessed life that has the hope and assurance of a future in him. As we go through the seasons of our lives, he promises we can have a hope and a future. In Luke chapter 4, beginning from verse 1, Jesus, he gives us a catalog of his ministry, the mission of his ministry. It lists in there that how Jesus Christ of Nazareth was, an, was anointed to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And so he begins to list his mission. Why? Because it's, he, he understands that I have not come to give people a perfect life, but I have come to give them a hope of a blessed future, a hope of a life that can be in line with God. In our text, Job has a turnaround. In his circumstances. This means God will move or cause us to begin to change on all sides of our lives. God will reverse the irreversible concerning you and I. That which you have lost and that which is gone, we think is gone. God is capable of bringing it back tonight. When God turns to you, it is your turn. Your story will change from good to better, from better to best. Why? Because the God we serve is a God of a turnaround. I'm not here to promise you when, but listen to me tonight. When God begins to move upon our lives, like he moved on the life of Job, there was a turnaround of events. For his life. Reminded of Hannah. The Bible says she says. She's one of two wives. That this man had. And every year. He would go to. Shiloh to offer sacrifice to God. This other wife had sons and daughters. But Hannah was barren. The Bible says, Hannah, God withheld the children from Hannah. He closed the womb of Hannah. And every year after year, she would go to Shiloh, to the mountain, until one year she determined that, listen, I will knock on heaven's door like never before. The Bible says she's in the temple. She's crying of anguish before God. She's pouring her heart before God. She says, Lord, I have suffered shame. I have suffered from this woman, my competitor. She is boastful over her children and everything that is happening. Oh God, if you would, by your grace, open my womb. She's praying, not audibly. The Bible says she's opening her mouth and no voice is being heard. I mean, oh, there are some prayers like that tonight. That you don't need your neighbor to hear you, but heaven should hear you. Even the priest missed it. Eli, the priest, comes and he judges rashly. He says, you are drunk. And she said, listen, she, 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 she was able to withhold. I mean, somebody comes to you and they call you drunk when you are, when you are anguishing with your maker. If I, was, if I was Hannah, I would stand up and slap that priest and say, uh, you, you, you did. She says, oh no, my Lord. It is actually out of the anguish of my heart. I am pouring my heart before God, the maker of heaven and earth, the one who I know is able to open my... And the Bible says that very year, Hannah conceived the following uh, two, three years down the line. She brings Samuel, one of the best prophets of the Old Testament. She brings Samuel and she dedicates him to the house of God. Why? Because the God of a turnaround visited Hannah tonight. It's the same God that I'm talking about. He visits Job in his anguish. And there was a turnaround of events in the life of Job. And so let's consider as I bring this to a close, the trigger to that turnaround. 
Number one, there was a repentance on the side of Job. Verse 6 of Job chapter 42. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Here is Job. He understood that, yes, the bigger picture, yes, God has taken the glory, God. But listen, things have happened in my heart. My heart has been bruised. My heart has been wounded. I have said things I shouldn't have said. I have marked people I shouldn't have marked. I have distanced myself from certain people. And God, Job says, listen, I will repent. I will turn away from that. And the Bible says he repents of his sins. He turns away. And that was a turning point for the God of a turnaround to begin to look back on Job. He turned away. We have to make that point as well. Choosing to let go of every pain. Choosing to let go of every disappointment. Choosing to let go of the frustrations of life. And we begin to minister again. Yes, the hurt is real. Yes, the pain is real. But repentance is we choose to let go of the pain and we look to God. The second thing that Job did was it was a change of focus. There was a shift in the mind of Job from himself to others. Verse 8. Now therefore take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams. Go to my, to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. For I will accept him. So here is God. He gives instruction to the three friends of Job. That listen, uh, you have sinned. I want you to go to Job because his heart has turned away. He has repented. And I want him to have a shift of focus from looking inward. How many know during the struggles of life we can be so concerned about ourselves? We can be so inward focused. Looking just at ourselves. And God here challenges Job. He says, listen, I want you to pray for your friends. Offer a sacrifice on behalf of your friends. I know you are the injured one. I know you are the one who, is, who has suffered loss. I know you are the one who is frustrated. I know you are the one who has experienced a reversal in life. But I want you to shift your focus from yourself to other people. You offer a sacrifice on behalf of your friends and see what will happen for you, Job. So I ask you tonight, can God count on you even during your season of loss, your season of frustration? Can God bring people to you to minister to them? Or should it be when you're only on the mountaintop, when you're being celebrated, then you can touch lives? Can you touch lives even in the, in, the, in the low times of your life? Can you minister? Can you advise? Can you pray for people even when it does not seem right for you to do so? We heard this morning in our adult Bible study the story of Pastor Harold Warner. He has an accident. He's in hospital. I've even read in the books that have been written. He's in hospital. He reaches out to the nurse who was treating him. He prays for her. He preaches to her. He prays for her. She repents. Everybody that came to attend to Pastor Harold Warner, whilst he's injured, whilst he's in hospital, they were ministered to. Why? Because this is a man who understood that, listen, if a turnaround is going to happen, I have to shift the focus from self to others. Can God count on you and me tonight to shift our focus from self to others. He says, my servant Job will pray for you. Can God say that about you and I? When we're not on the limelight, when we've been stricken, can God say, my servant will pray for you. Or do we disappear in those moments and qualify and say, but, but how, how can I pray? 
Even me, I need prayer. Why do you come to me? No, no ways. We qualify. But God says, go to Job. He will offer a sacrifice for you. And so the shift or the turning around began when Job was willing to shift his focus off of himself to someone else. The Bible says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for somebody else. I don't know your story tonight. But I know what my God is capable of doing when we turn ourselves to God, avail ourselves before God. The Bible says, verse 10, and the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. There's a connection. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those who had been his acquaintances came to him and ate food with him in his house. They consoled him. They comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Verse 12, the Bible says, Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight. The God will serve. As you look back, you may yearn for the former years, but God is saying he's going to bless your latter days than your earlier days, the Bible declares. He did it for Job. He begins to account here, for he had 14,000 sheep, double the sheep he had before the calamity. He had 6,000 camels, double the camels that he had before the calamity. 1,000 yoke of oxen, double that. 1,000 female donkeys, double that. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And the Bible would go on to record that the daughters of Job were the most beautiful daughters in the land. That's what God can do. He's a God of a turnaround. He's a God of a turnaround. I want you to bow your head tonight. 